unidentifiable flying object. <laughs> UFO continues to be a mystery. Wasn't alone in space. Sightings of UFO. Something out there. Close enough to be observed. What could it be? It could only be a thing. A UFO. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode, I think it's 109, 109, 109 of UFO No, your break from the propaganda, the bad news, the treasonous politicians, and get elevated, speculate, and talk about energy and reincarnation. Because you know what is right around the corner, peeps? New Year's. It's a new year right around the corner. Hard to believe, man. I don't know. Some people I've talked to have said this year went really fast. Some people I've talked to have said it went kind of slow, depending on what they had going on, uh, which is understandable. You know, time, it's perspective, it's all relative, right? It's all relative. Sometimes it goes fast, sometimes it goes slow. But to me, this year went incredibly fast. And I'm sure to a lot of you, you're like, thank Christ, it's over. But what is our, what is our new year going to hold for us? What is our new year going to have in store for us? It makes me think about new things coming down, right? Uh, the possibilities of what's coming our way. If you've listened to the show enough, you've probably heard me say that I'm agnostic about a lot of things. In fact, I feel like it's the best way to approach most things is being an agnostic because then you can figure it out instead of bringing your biases in, right? It helps me get rid of those biases I may have, and the hope is that it keeps me looking in every direction instead of the ones I think are the priority. Another thing you've probably heard me say is that I believe everything is connected by energy. Everything. And in life, when I have conversations that sometimes lead into spirituality, which they do. I, I have a lot of religious people in my family. I talk to people. I'm very open-minded about a lot of things. I was raised in a very religious family even though I, again, I'm very agnostic about pretty much everything. But when it lead, when, when conversations lead to spirituality, I still hold that belief about energy. That the belief that our faith, connection to a higher power, something larger than ourselves we're tapping into that larger pool of energy that connects the whole universe. And with the new year right around the corner, the big thing is New Year's resolutions. Starting the year off right, hitting the ground running. And it got me thinking about new beginnings. Maybe you're going to take up butt play. I don't know. And the recycling of, of energy, taking that old energy, putting into new energy, creating a new you every year, that led me to reincarnation. So I figured, let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. I want to thank you all for joining the show. Ed's not with me. He's sick. Poor guy. We miss him. We love him. He's here in spirit, of course. Uh, Ed, we love you, dude. So, we're going to miss you. But, uh, New Year right around the corner. So, I hope you're all doing good. I'm cruising in the stratosphere. If you couldn't tell, I'm already a little spaced out. <laughs> cruising about, 
102,000 feet. That's what it about feels like. My, my instruments are not working appropriately. So it feels like 102. Thousand feet. It's clear skies, baby. If you like the show, be sure to share this episode with your friends, your family. Grandma's going to love us. Give us a nice review. And no matter where you're listening slash watching, hit that subscribe button. Make sure and follow. Hit the notification bell wherever you're at so that way you can uh, catch every new episode the moment it comes out. You can click that link in the show notes, Portal to All Things UFO Know, to find merch. You can listen, find where to watch, listen, all the good stuff. And now you can buy us a Romulan Ale. Click the link in the description. And, of course, make sure and check out our partners, Clarkson CBD Co., for excellent CBD products. Scribed, if you want a great Audible alternative, I thoroughly enjoy it. And you get 60 days free if you sign up through the link. Uh, and then Buzzsprout, if you want to start your own podcast. And hit me up, man. I love doing this stuff. And I, I've uh, done it my own way. My own way. Forged my own path. Gorilla podcasting, if you will. So get a hold of me. I'll set you up. And click that link. So you start your own podcast. Again, get a bunch of free good stuff for using the link. And then, of course, you can join the growing list of tin foilists at the Tinfoil Militia, where you get ad-free episodes, rewards for tier members. You can chat with us directly. You get access to the Discord server and access to live bonus episodes each and every single week, plus every single bit of my loyalty. Unfortunately, this week, I don't have a live episode uh, because uh, things at holidays, things are up in the air. I'm having to throw all this together, but hey, we're going to get it done. We're going to get it done. Every single episode is brought to you by the Tinfoil Militia members who support this podcast. Casey Armadillo, Michael Ralston, Rihanna Little, the OG supporter, designer, tinfoil hat wearing Aaron Rice, Jesse, Jet Life Teague, Michael Benavides, Carlton Turner, Matthew Morfitt, Morgan, and Nathan Boldly Gone Higby, who is indeed Boldly Gone out there searching for Blind Mike, hoping to get some updates here soon. We love you, Mike, and we love you, Nathan. And with that, let's get into the episode, shall we? So, as I was saying, I think everything's connected. And the New Year's right around the corner. I think a lot of you, me, I was familiar with the concept of reincarnation, but I've talked to a lot of people. Um, We've had Wajid on. Wajid Hassan, great guy, spiritual guru. Out there putting positivity in the world, but I'm sure he believes in reincarnation. Maybe not. I, I might be speaking for him, perhaps, but I'm pretty sure. Uh, but maybe you do as well. Let me know. Hit me up in the comments, whatever. Let me know. What do you believe in? What do you believe? Do you believe in reincarnation? What do you think reincarnation is? Is it, uh, do you think it's, anyways, I just want to know your thoughts on it. The concept is fascinating. I love the concept that our energy that we accumulate through life passes on to the next life and that we get reincarnated into some other form of life. And then we gather that experience that we take with us and it just builds and builds and builds. You know, like, it kind of reminds me of those people that you meet that you say, boy, they got an old soul. You know what I mean? An old soul. That's what it makes me think of. They've been around for a while. But think about what it would mean. If, if it really was true, and I'm not saying it's not, again, agnostic, But 
if that's true, then it really means we're all immortal, right? That we don't really die, our physical bodies die, but our energy passes on, lives on. But what is it really? What is reincarnation really? Is it real? Is it, ine- is it inevitable that we are going to continue on? Is it another realm of existence? Is reincarnation just another realm of existence after this one? before the soul, whatever whatever it is inside of us, the energy that goes on, if you want to call it a soul, is reincarnation just another plane of existence before the next life? Do we come back to this plane? Do we go on to another one? Fascinating to think that it's just a path we just keep going. We keep traveling. We keep going forward. A perpetual journey. And then what what happens? Do you master that at the end of it? What, what happens at the end of that? Th- think about that like a child being born a woman being pregnant, like here you have a baby in a womb that's kind of blended with a person from space. And then they kind of, they come out of this woman in the, in the same, like all kind of, there's this theory that they have memories from their past life up until they start creating new memories as a young child. Fascinating to think about how wise these babies that are shitting in their diapers are. Could be amazing to think about. They could be wise beyond their years, but they just can't use their words. They just keep. What? What? A, I, I, I don't know if I would enjoy that. If I would, I enjoy being a, a reborn. Like here I am. I finally got you know potty training down for my whole life and then I get thrust back into another diaper? I don't know if I'm going to enjoy that. Hopefully I come back as like a really badass bush. You know, and I don't mean like a Demi Moore bush. I mean like an actual bush. Like I want to be one of those, you know, those shrubberies that you can like turn into a dinosaur. You know, like from Edward Scissorhands, you know, like one of those types of things. Oh, I'd love that. That'd be pretty cool. Maybe. I don't know. But then you're stuck in one place. Oh, reincarnation. It's so, so much to think about. So much pressure. And what happens if you don't think about this? If you don't think about what you're going to come back as, do you just come back as something random? Do you have a say in it? What if, what if you concentrate really hard? right before you pass on, which would be tough because you're dying, you know. But if you're concentrating, thinking about what you might come back as, maybe, just maybe, you might. But maybe it's one of those things, you know, you say it, but then it gets misinterpreted. You know, you come back as something else. Who knows? Anyways. It's just crazy to think about. I know there's a lot of people out there that also dismiss the idea of reincarnation. They they either think that the, there's nothing. You just walk around life and then at the end, it's the end. Or in a lot of cases, if you're religious then you believe that you go on to uh, heaven or hell if you're bad. But I always think about the past life idea. 
you know, where, where, where does this come in when people claim to have lived past lives? What's the reality to that? You know, and does it, does it add to your experience of the life you're currently living? You know what I mean? Now, I'm not going to look at this from a religious aspect. I'm not going to look at it from um, the different views from different religions on reincarnation or anything like that. I'm not taking it from that perspective. I am taking this from a dumbass perspective, asking questions, looking at stories of reincarnation, of claimed reincarnation and past lives and kind of putting that together to just create a picture of what it might look like. Because I find the whole thing fascinating. And like I said, to me, the idea that, you know, new year, new possibilities, new opportunities, um, it just got me thinking of renewal. So it might go hand in hand. Anyways. Some of the possibilities of what could be true is what fascinates me. And there's a lot of scholars, philosophers, a lot of um, ancient Eastern texts, ancient writings from India that talk about reincarnation, of course, all that stuff. But I just want to get at what it might actually be. You know what I mean? Like, what is it? What does it really look like? So let's dig into it a little bit. Carl Sagan said that he believed in past lives and that it should be taken more seriously. He said, young children sometimes report details of a previous life which upon checking out turn out to be accurate and which they could not have known about in any other way other than reincarnation. So in other words, they were giving details of a life that there's no way they could have known, which I just repeated. You guys are smart enough. What am I doing? You don't need to explain to. Now, I'm very skeptical of hypnotic regression and a lot of these uh, past life cases and things like that come from hypnotic regression, but a lot of them don't. And the ones that generally don't are younger kids. Younger kids, um, previous or, or under the age of six or seven, it looks like, is what generally it seems to be. So there's this researcher named Jim Tucker. He's one of the leading researchers on reincarnation, past lives, all that good stuff. And he says the subjects usually stop making their past life statements by the age of six or seven. And most seem to lose the memories around then. This is the age when children start school and begin having more experience in the current life, as well as when they tend to lose their early childhood memories. So quit sending them to school. Don't send them to school at six or seven. Let that past life stew. Let it stew. Keep them out till they're like 15. Let's see what happens. Let's not indoctrinate them so soon, shall we? Let's see what those past lives manifest to without taking those memories away. Be interesting. So there's clearly something here. That's what I I think about this, is that there's clearly something here. From studies that are done to ancient texts being talking about this, the belief in it. You know, we talk about the power of belief a lot and how it makes a lot of these things true for the individual. I mean, if there's anything more individualized it is past lives. 
and reincarnation. So who are we to say it doesn't exist or to say it can't exist? Everything is possible. Everything is possible. Anything is possible. When you start looking into just everyday things, like quantum mechanics, you start looking into quantum mechanics and you realize, what is reality even? What is real? What's not real? Am I real? Am I not real? I mean, it's just, it's it's crazy when you start thinking about it. So to start to sit there, oh, reincarnation isn't real. Oh, aliens aren't real. Oh, God isn't real. Oh, it's, that's, those are bold statements. Those are bold statements. In my opinion, very arrogant statements. Because how could you know? How could you know? Now, you might think that God isn't real. You might think that aliens aren't real. You might think that Bigfoot sucks cock behind a gas station. But who really knows? Who really knows? So don't be so quick. Don't be so quick and arrogant. Have some humility when faced with the universe. So, Tucker, this guy, Jim Tucker, um, his research that he put in the paper, Children's Reports of Past Life Memories, has some very, very interesting, let's call it phenomena, because I'm not really sure what it is. He picked up on a lot of details from kids claiming to be able to remember their past lives. For example, they would often talk about a period of less than two years between the death of the individual they claimed to have been and the birth of the child who was remembering it. Less than two years so this whole idea that, uh, you know, adults are having these past lives where they were alive in the 1500s and, you know, they were a witch and all that kind of stuff, that that might be a little much. That might be a little much. I'm not saying it's not true. I'm just saying that based on research, it might be a little far-fetched. And that also that the two people that were connected uh, as in the child and then whoever they claim to have uh, been in their past life were also in the same country or same area. He uh, wrote about some of the discoveries and he said, the one part of the past life that is often out of the ordinary is the mode of death 70% of them are death by unnatural causes. Unnatural causes. So now that makes me think energy. You think about how much energy is released when somebody has a traumatic death, specifically one that's not natural. I mean, generally natural deaths, well, look, I mean, hit by a tornado would be considered a natural death, right? (laughs) I mean, kind of. It'd be unusual, but it'd still be natural because you got hit by a natural disaster and you're, you know, died by being slammed into the ground. That's pretty natural. But maybe they mean more like, you know, a heart attack in bed or something like that. Anyways. 70%. Now, here's the other interesting thing is that he also said that a lot of these cases are most likely to be found where there is already a belief in reincarnation. Now, of course, examples of of past life memories and all that stuff exist all over the world. But according to this guy, Jim Tucker, a lot of the cases are in the areas with belief. 
Now, when we talk about energy, I talk a lot about the power of belief and the energy that's put into that, the energy from that belief, right? And how much that could play a part in manifesting certain things. And when talking about sightings, when talking about ghosts, when talking about, you know, aliens, UFOs, Bigfoot, you name it. There's the potential if a person believes in something strong enough. The power of the mind could have the ability to manifest something, or at least to you personally, right? Maybe not enough to like make a whole crowd, even though there are some sightings where it seems like maybe there was some mass uh, 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 conjuration of some kind, but... This, specifically past life memories, reincarnation, it's so personalized that the power of belief in that, well, anyways, something to think about. That the energy of belief could fuel the reincarnation, which I argue is still real, right? Still real. It's it's one thing if we're, I mean, even a sighting. Even a sighting, if you conjured the sighting from your will and want for it to be there, it's still real to you, right? It's same idea of like a placebo effect. It's still real to you. They've had, I mean, I've talked about placebo effects on here before. So it's still real. The effect, the experience is still real if we break down what real is. Real is simply your senses picking it up, making it real. And of course, there's the whole idea that, you know, it's in a lot of like third world countries or countries where they have a lot of belief in these types of things, obviously you saying that you have these memories or that you had this past life, it's going to be more widely accepted because they already believe it. Hence why there's probably more of this reported in countries where it's, it's not looked down on, it's not considered taboo or woo-woo in any way. Whereas, you know, generally in the West, it's not really entertained as widely, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. It's not not as accepted. He would also, this guy Jim Tucker, would also mention birthmarks on a person's body who was making claims of being able to, or, or having past life memories, being able to recall these memories. And he would say that a lot of the children who claim to have remembered a past life that ended in, you know, an untimely way, whatever it might have been, you know, murder, an accident, whatever. They would often have birthmarks or markings in some way on their body that match the wound from this past experience. That's kind of crazy. There might not be any like emotional response or or emotional development that corresponds with the past life so like they might not have the same aspirations they might not have the 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 same passions or things like that that go along with having these past lives or past experiences but there are some there are some cases that do actually like emulate the emotions, the fears, the personalities of the person they claim to have been. 
But a lot of times to the family members, they don't, I mean, to them it's, it's abstract because they have nothing to compare it to. So it's not like they knew the person who this family member of theirs is, is, you know what I'm saying? It's like having a past life. It's not like they were connected to them. So they're not going to realize the personality differences. They're not going to realize because they didn't know that person. So, see, they're not able to connect that. To them, they the person might just be like, ah, oh, yeah, they, you know, they don't really like have the same personality as the rest of the family, but everybody's got a brother or a sister or something that's a weirdo. The idea and belief in reincarnation has been around for centuries. And it's really only in the modern times that the idea has been kind of put put out of the mind unless it's with religion and things like that. But now you have now you have some studies that are being done to actually scientifically record and authenticate what it could mean, what reincarnation might be, and what it could mean for human life, which would be huge. I mean, obviously, if we find out that reincarnation is real, like scientifically. And, and you know, here's, here's the other thing. Look, if you believe this, if you believe that reincarnation is real, you don't need the scientific data. Right? I mean, you don't need anything to confirm for you. So good for you. Like, good, that's great. But for those of us, me, the weak-minded that questions everything to at detriment sometimes sometimes at detriment those of us that need that data it's exciting to think that they might actually be able to come up with something that that confirms and and establishes that, yes, this is real and this is a thing. There are a ton of cases to choose from when it comes to claims of past lives and when it comes to claims of reincarnation. But I wanted to go over some of the ones that are a little bit more recent. Some ones that I found interesting. Now, I'm sure, and I would love to, if there's ones that you guys know of, I would love to hear about it. I would absolutely love it. Please feed me. Feed me stories. Feed me news stories. Feed me, you name it. You name it. I love connecting dots. So I I look into things. So if there's anything that you guys want to send my way that you think I should be on to, that you think I should see, specifically with this, obviously for this story, but anything, let me know. Hit me up. All the links are in the show notes. All right, so let's look at this. It's called the James, I think it's Lenninger case is how it's pronounced. Uh, and this comes from, uh, he has memories of World War II. So here's what it is. This one is from um, the early 2000s. A three-year-old, James Leininger, was obsessed with fighter planes from World War II. But he wasn't just obsessed Despite having not known, obviously he's three, uh, having not known about the war 
for one. Uh, he apparently knew all about the war. He knew all about these planes. He knew their inner workings. He could not only draw detailed pictures of a U.S. fighter plane's drop tank, which that's the uh, excess fuel tank on the bottom of the plane. Not only could he draw pictures of one, he could completely break down the plane like an experienced pilot would. And not only that, he also suffered from crazy nightmares that he would draw pictures of afterwards, always showing a plane in flames heading towards the ground. Crash fighter pilot? Maybe. Maybe. So they end up asking him his parents, obviously, I'm sure, ask him about his dreams, ask him about these these drawings and what they mean. And James said he was a pilot in the plane and that he was in an accident. The Japanese shot him down. He also said that his boat was the HMAS Natoma. And they found that an H A H M A S Natoma served in World War II, U.S. Navy boat. Crazy. Even more amazing was they found a picture of crew members that they showed to James. And get this, he could name each and every single person in the picture correctly. He also identified himself as U.S. Navy pilot James Houston. Crazy that his name was James and that the other guy's name was James. Records ended up showing that James Houston indeed did die in a dogfight. Crazy. Crazy. And, of course, you know, they looked into, like, the claims of uh, what happened to James, and it was everything that uh, little James described was what happened to big James. Crazy. There was another case of a three-year-old boy who claimed to not only remember his past life, but also knew who murdered him and where his body was. Apparently, this happened in Golan Heights in Syria. A young boy recalled a past life where he was murdered. And he was sure that the murderer had hit him in the head with an axe and then buried him in a shallow grave. The villagers, where he was, and the boy's parents didn't believe him, which that would be very, very hard to believe. They just chalked it up to imagination. But he insisted on leading them to the spot where he claimed there was a grave from this past life. And when they took him to this spot, because he was adamant, they found the grave. And they found a rotting corpse. And the dead body had a distinct head wound, an axe, that was also found in the grave. Crazy. Crazy. What's crazier is the kid had a birthmark on his forehead in the exact same place, the exact same shape as the wound on the body they found. That's nuts. That's nuts. In Thailand, another three-year-old, Chennai 
Chuma Lawong. I am sure I'm saying that wrong, but I love it. Could even recall his former name, Bua Kai, who was a teacher, said that he was killed, that he was shot when riding his bike to teach at school. Three-year-old Shanai, despite his family telling him, again, nothing more than imagination, I'm telling you, parents, listen to your goddamn kids. Well, sometimes. I mean, look, I had a three-year-old. But this is some weird shit. You know, like my kid would come up and, and tell me weird shit, like, you know, obviously that I wouldn't believe. You know, that, oh, uh, I mean, he, honestly, my kid didn't, like, come up to me and just tell me random stories. So if my kid came up to me claiming he had a past life in which he was murdered, if for nothing else but just morbid curiosity, I'd be like, really? So what happened? And then I'd do a little digging. I wouldn't just be like, ah, go back to bed. You're imagining things. That's what it, it sounds like these parents do. Maybe they don't, but that's what it sounded like. That's what it sounded like. So, they kind of brush him off like it's nothing, but he kept insisting that it was true. So much so that eventually he got his grandparents involved to allow, uh, or the grandmother, I guess, said, all right, I'll take him to this village where he claims to be. He claims to have once lived where this Buakai's parents still live so they could go talk to him. So they do. So they go and they find this uh, this town. They go to the house with the elderly couple, the parents of Buakai. They find the parents they talked to him. The, their son had been dead for eight years. But what's crazy is that Buakai was indeed shot from behind. Autopsy report showed small entry wound back of the head, larger wound out the front, which is what happens when you get shot. Shanai had two birthmarks, a three-year-old boy who claimed that he had the, the past life. Two birthmarks. Guess where they were? You're right. Identical positioning, front and back, size and shape, were the exact same as the wounds of the teacher. That's crazy. Five-year-old Luke Rollman reportedly called objects and toys Pam. Well, he's retarded. That's all there is to it. <laughs> That's all there is to it. He can't die. He doesn't know words. No, I'm just kidding. He was calling toys and objects Pam. His mom, Erica, finally asked him who Pam was. Especially after the fact that Luke had made several comments that he used to be a girl. Well, that's going around a lot these days. But this is back in a day when it was not so prevalent, is the word, I guess. Also, he wore the same earrings as his mom and that he had black hair. So his mom was super confused. She keeps talking to him. Kid keeps saying more and more things. Then he says, I was Pam, but I died. And that he went up to heaven but he was pushed back down and that when he woke up, he was a baby and that he was named Luke. So, so Erica, the mom kept asking him, well, where did you live when you were Pam? How did Pam die? He said that he was in Chicago and Pam took the train a lot. He died or she died. Pam died. He, she died in a fire which forced him to jump out of a out of a window. So wait a minute, he died in the fire. He died in a fire which forced him to jump out of a window. I would imagine 
that was a fire jumped out. But anyways, we'll find out. The mom, Erica, researched about the situation and found that in 1993, there was a fire at the Paxton Hotel in Chicago where 19 people died. And when she looked into the details, guess what? You guessed right. Pam Robinson died after jumping from one of the hotel windows after trying to escape the smoke and the flames. You guys are so smart. You're on it. Cameron McCauley recalled a former life in a White House, not the White House, a White House, overlooking the ocean. And to a lot of researchers, this case is one of the most credible cases of reincarnation, apparently, from Glasgow, Scotland, 2009, two-year-old Cameron McCauley. Imagine saying that name in Scotland. Cameron McCauley. I don't know if that's right. That's terrible. Cameron McCauley started speaking another uh, about another life where he lived in a white house on the island of Barra where he had a black and white dog, claimed his father was Shane Robinson and that he was killed when he was uh, apparently run over by a car. And that apparently something that he would repeat a lot is what triggered a lot of the investigation into his case, which was uh, he kept saying he missed his other mother. And so anyway, so they started digging into it and the family visited this island. Uh, What was the name of the island again? Glasgow. Oh, Island of Barra. I'm sorry. Island of Barra. Took Cameron with him. Went to a white house on the beach to a family named the Robertsons who lived there and had a black and white dog. And Cameron, again, being only two years old, knew the entire layout of the house including all the little intricacies of the house that only someone who lived there would know. Almost everything the kid had said matched the house, aside from the fact that his name, Shane. But unfortunately... As they tried to investigate later and later, this kid, as he grew up and got older, he remembered less and less of this past life and was able to recall even less details and all that. So they never really got to the bottom of it. Interesting, though. But, I mean, look. It's funny how they say the most credible case because that one, I mean, the ones with the birth con- the birth control, I almost said birth control, with the uh, the birthmarks on the on the heads where the wounds were, those those are crazy. Those are crazy. In 1957, May 5th, Hexham, England. Um, John and Florence Pollux had two daughters, Joanna and Jacqueline, 11 and 6, who were killed in a car accident. And and I would imagine they were in another car. I'm not really sure. But either way, the uh, the girls were killed in a car accident. 11 and 6. Parents are distraught, of course. Uh, that would That's an understatement. 
But a year later, a little over a year later, 1958, October 4th, Florence gave birth to twins, twin girls that they named Jillian and Jennifer. And they started discovering interesting things about them, like Jennifer had birthmarks on her forehead and waist, exactly in the same position where Jacqueline had scars. As the two twins grew together, they ended up moving to the north of England in Whitley Bay. And they started to ask for toys that had belonged to their deceased sisters. Toys that they had never seen because they had never met the sisters, obviously. And they were totally aware of this. Several years later, the family decides to move back to Hexham, where they previously were. And despite the two girls having never seen the town before, knew the whole town. They knew where they used to live. So it was... um, What really got them, the parents, was the f- how the twin girls would react every time that a car would come anywhere near them, which that would be crazy. That would be crazy. Very interesting. There's another one, semi semi tetasmus. Semi is it semi? So it's not exactly sure when this happened. Sometime in the 1950s in Turkey, there was a young mom. She's pregnant. Uh, her name is Karen Phil Tetasmus. She'd been pregnant for several months and she started having really weird dreams. And in her dreams, a man spoke to her. His face was really bloody, claiming that he was Salim Fesley. And she continued to have these dreams all the way through her pregnancy up until she gave birth to a baby boy that she called Semi, or Semi, it's S-E-M-I-H, Semi, the H is silent, I don't know, Semi, I I have no idea. After the kid's birth, she has, she stops having these dreams of this bloody face guy talking to her, uh, Salim, and the new mom forgets all about it. But as soon as this young kid could speak, he started to, his first words were not the normal first words and phrases of a young baby. And apparently to her, she claims that it became very clear to her that her son was the reincarnation of the man that she was having dreams of, this Salim Fesley. And that her son was claiming he had been murdered by his neighbor. And when she investigated this in a nearby village where this, where her son, who is semi claiming to be Salim once lived. The mom met this Salim's widow. 
And not only did the kid get the details of the, her husband's death correct, but that he also would give her details of their lives together that only her husband would have known. That would be so trippy. That would be so trippy. Can you imagine? Imagine you lose your spouse. And out of nowhere, this mom and her kid come and tell you that this kid has memories of your spouse. That would be crazy. Would you believe it? I'd have a hard time believing that. I'd be, I think I'd be angry. You know what I mean? Because I would, I would, I would feel like they were maybe trying to take advantage of me in some way. And I'd be pissed about it. I mean, I, I mean, depending on what stage of the grief you're in, I guess. I don't know. I'd have a hard time with that one. Now, the widow said that the neighbor had always maintained that the death was a hunting accident. But the young kid insisted that he was shot on purpose. Which is, I mean, how would you prove that? How do you prove that? That'd be crazy. <laughs> what What's funny is, is that this semi-kid would go over there and continue to visit the family for a long time. Uh, and he would see the neighbor that supposedly was responsible for his death and would throw rocks at him. And I guess, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> You know, I that that's kind of crazy to think, like, what if he didn't? You're just going to let this kid throw rocks at this poor neighbor guy? What if he really didn't? What if he didn't? And this kid is just out of his mind, and he's throwing rocks, and the parents are like, well, I mean, he may have murdered him, so, you know, what do we do? Tell him no? Tell him no, you can't throw rocks at your possible murderer? Weird. That's a weird one. There's a lot more people than you might think that that have past lives or believe in reincarnation or believe that they re are reincarnated. Aside from a couple of the cases, most of them are a past life within several years. Again, like we'd said about that Jim Tucker's research, about it, you know, a couple of years after the person's death. There's only a few of them that weren't. But there's other cases of reincarnation stretching a lot further back. And again, this is mainly due and the result of hypnotic regression that I'm extremely skeptical of. So in my opinion, it, it should be heavily criticized these people. But I still think it's worth looking at because some of it is intriguing, if nothing else. So there's an interesting case of Dorothy Edie. And her claims that she lived in ancient Egypt. 
And her claims are interesting in their own way. But it actually did lead to discoveries by Egyptologists at the time that they were not aware of. Now, not all of it did. But some of it did. Which is really, really interesting. There's another case, James Arthur, Flowerdew, from the UK. He was haunted by dreams, sometimes waking memories of a city surrounded completely by desert with a temple carved into a cliff. And he then saw a documentary on the BBC of the ancient city of Petra in Jordan. And he was amazed, this guy, uh, James Arthur, was amazed to see that the images he was having in his dreams were the same ones he was seeing on the show. So then he comes public with it. Producers from the BBC come to him, approach him about making a show about his claims. So then he goes to Petra with this team of producers. And he was able to walk them through all of the crazy intricacies of this place that only a local would know. And Flowerdew insisted that he had lived there for hundreds and hundreds of, or, or I'm sorry, had lived there hundreds and hundreds of years ago. I'm sorry, not that he lived there for hundreds of years, that he had lived there hundreds of years ago. And then he also identified sites with historians and archaeologists that they had not excavated yet. And that when they did go to excavate them, they were accurate. And then he ended up finding, apparently, a guard station where he claimed that that's where he had died, that he had apparently been stabbed by someone using a spear. And, of course, with all the accuracies that he'd had with finding the the sites that he did, and going back and being able to show them all the the subtleties and things of the area, they took him at his word. <laughs> There's a really weird case of uh, Sam, and that's all it's known, Sam. Around the age of 18 months, so a little over a year old, year and six months basically, while his dad was changing his diaper, the kid said, when I was your age, I used to change your diaper. So apparently it would come out that when he would, when the kid would look at an old family photo or the photo album for the first time, he would state that Sam was his father's father. So Sam was his own grandfather. And that Sam's dad had produced the family album. 
or I'm sorry, yeah, Sam's dad brought out the fam- the photo album just to get the kid's reaction to the photo album. So when he sees a picture of a car, the boy says, that's my car. And it was, it was his grandfather's car. Um, then his parents try and trick him by showing him a picture of his grandfather with a bunch of friends. And they pointed intentionally to the wrong person saying that, oh, that's you. And each time the young kid would correct them, say, no, that's me. And point to the point to his grandfather at 18 months. That's kind of crazy. So when his parents asked him what else he remembered, he said that his sister, his great aunt, in other words, had been turned into a fish by bad men. What's crazy is that Sam's grandfather's sister, so the young boy's grandfather's sister, as in great aunt, had been brutally murdered and her body dumped in a nearby river. crazy but they didn't actually tell the kid those details being only 18 months they just he said the words and they i'm sure were just like oh fuck because what are you going to do go into the gruesome details when the 18 year old or 18 month old that's crazy you're not going to do that of course peter hume a bingo caller from Birmingham, UK. He was having memories of a previous life a long time ago. And through hypnotic regression, he managed to fill in the pieces. Apparently, he, was, uh, he had lived in the 1640s, and he was named... John Raphael, a guard in Oliver Cromwell's army. He started locating in the hypnotic regression session. He started locating locations he had been to or lived in. One of them was a church in the village of Combstock, south of England. He would tell them that The church at one time had a tower with a tree growing in it. And at the time, it did. But it had been demolished in 1676. And in the records of the church, the records show that a John Raphael not only registered at the church, but was married in it. Mm. Very interesting. Now, you could dig into that a little bit more. And you could say, okay, well, if, if that is fuckery, how, how? How is it fuckery? Okay, well, let's say... And this is a stretch, but let's it let's just say. I mean, it's all a stretch if you think about it, but let's just say that this therapist, hypnotic regressionist, whatever you want to call him, had knowledge, historical knowledge of this place. You have a guy that comes to you that's putting some things together. Oh, I feel like there's a church. I feel like there's a church. Well, maybe you're this guy from this church that I know about. Da, 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 da. Maybe. Look, as a hypnotic regressionist, if you're going to say, well, that's not possible, uh, you're a liar. If you think you can't do that at a, as a hypnot, if you think that hypnotic regressionists cannot do that, you're wrong. Uh, they could absolutely 
help influence memories, even implant memories. It's, it's, uh, I just went blank on the inception. It's inception. It's all it is. It's been done. Leonardo DiCaprio did it. Come on. Ryan Hammonds. In the 19... 2009, I'm sorry. 2009, four years old. Always had an interest for Hollywood and the movies. Who doesn't? Come on. When he turned four in 2009, he started suffering from weird nightmares. He would wake up screaming... Clutching in his chest, claiming his heart exploded in Hollywood. His parents, not sure what to do, were hoping that he would outgrow the dreams, but they didn't. One night, they're tucking him into bed, and he said, Mom, I think I used to be someone else. He started giving details of a huge white house with swimming pools in the yard that he had three sons, but he couldn't remember their names. And he was really upset by the fact that he couldn't remember. So the mom, trying to get to the bottom of it, is going through pictures and old stills stills of old movies to try and find... Uh, who her son might be talking about. And her son Ryan pointed out at one point a scene from a movie night after night from the 1930s. He pointed to a guy who later turned out to be George Pace and to another guy that he claimed was himself Martin Martin. And according to research, Martin Martin was a Hollywood agent who died of a heart attack in 1964 who had three sons. Very interesting. Edward Austrian, four-year-old, was trying to convey a story, tell a story, to his parents during apparently during really rainy days he would get anxious and he would like claim that he had pain in his throat and so when he was asked about it he said that he his shot was hurting When he got a little bit older, he started detailing his other life where he was serving in the trenches during World War I. His mom, Patricia, who apparently Edward wrote all this down. His mom, Patricia, found his writings and in those writings found this memory that he had had of his past life experience. And here's what it was. We were walking along through the mud. It was damp. It was raining. And it was cold. My rifle is heavy. I heard a shot come from behind, and I felt my throat fill with blood. Crazy. Especially from a four-year-old. That would be... That would be weird. What's interesting is that when he was taken to the doctors, because he kept claiming that he had pain in his throat, when he was taken to the doctors, they found a cyst. But they were never able to agree on treatment for it. 
And there might be connected, maybe not, but eventually it just vanished. This cyst was just gone. Weird. Jeffrey Keen. During a vacation with his wife in the early 1990s. He apparently, out of the blue, started having memories of battlefields from the Civil War. Sunken Road in Maryland. Maryland, the way I said that. Maryland. And he felt all of a sudden like he was going to have a heart attack. Stopped for a minute. Was in pain, feeling dizzy. Had this strange mental feeling like deja vu. (laughs) Now here's what's funny. Before they went home on this vacation, Keen made the smart decision to go and Talk to a professional. So he went and talked to a psychic at a party they were at. And she asked him if he had ever considered past lives as an option for his weird feeling. He started doing research and eventually found a General Gordon, who had been at a battle of Entletem at Sunken Road. And according to all accounts, he had been apparently uh, on the battlefield during the Civil War. And apparently he started to connect it even more by finding strange marks on his body that he previously meant nothing to him, but now all of a sudden they matched the wounds that apparently this uh, General Gordon suffered during the Civil War. And then on his 30th birthday, he started getting a sudden aching in his jaw. And when he went into the hospital to get it checked out, well, anyways, he got it checked out. Didn't seem to be anything. They couldn't find a reason for it. And when he went digging again, guess what he found? General Gordon, at 30 years old, was shot in the jaw. (gasps) Crazy. There's a lot of mainstream scientists and researchers who are starting to become more and more open to the idea of reincarnation. Now, the last couple of those are definitely, you know, like to go to a psychic and to be hypnotically regressed. I just, I just am extremely skeptical of those, especially the psychic. I mean, come on, man. I'm not saying there's not cases of some people that might just be a little bit psychic. Maybe, maybe. But you certainly, I don't think you could prove it. I mean, you could prove it if you were actually like being able to be psychic. But scientifically being able to prove it, I don't know. There's so much going on there. Intuition clairvoyance. I mean, there's all kinds of things beyond just psychic. It makes me wonder all these stories and tales of past lives, past experiences, and and how that plays into inspiration, imagination, Reincarnation, all the Asians. 
It just makes you think of like what purpose does it serve? If reincarnation is a thing, what purpose does it serve? Is it to keep building the energy that our soul collects, whatever it is? Is it to gain wisdom? But if we don't keep those memories, like obviously once you're to a certain age and you kind of let those memories go, start building new memories, like what purpose does it serve? Do you come back into that whole collection of life experience after this life is over? Do we become creators or deities in the end? Is it always on Earth? Is it on other planets? Is it all over time and space? Is that what aliens are? Are aliens going through a similar reincarnation phase as we are? So many possibilities. So many possibilities. But think about people like Leonardo da Vinci, who was centuries ahead of their time, ahead of his time, not their time. Where did he get that from? Where did he get that knowledge from? Was it a past life? Was it past experiences? Was it just him tapping into the overall energy of the universe? Past, present, and future. Like the cloud, but for the universe. Like the Akashic Records or Something like that, a, a gigantic pool of all human existence that some people, for some reason, might be able to tap into. Fascinating stuff. Fascinating stuff. And as always, like I say, I want to know. I want to know what you think. I want to know what you think of reincarnation. I want to know what you think of uh, just all of this. What do you think about all of it? Where do you align with this? Where do you where do you fall with it? What do you got planned for New Year's, huh? What's your New Year's resolutions? Are you going to get reincarnated as a bush or something better? I should have picked something better than a bush, but whatever. Apparently, I got bush on the brain. <laughs> Who knew? As always, if you have stories, you have experiences, you just want to reach out, you should. Call or text 208-477-1288. You can also email I want to believe 115 at gmail.com. All these are in the show notes. Go check it out. Description. Uh, if you like the show, be sure to share this episode. Give it a nice review. And no matter where you're listening slash watching... Make sure and hit that subscribe button so that way you don't miss anything. You don't miss anything. Don't miss it. Click that link in the show notes, portal to all things UFO No, find merch and all things, and find everywhere you can listen and watch uh, as well. Like I'd mentioned before, you can buy us a Romulan Ale. You should do that. They're only five bucks. Well, cheers to you live on the show. We will give a toast to you in your honor for buying us a Romulan ale. Again, you can find in the description. That sounded weird. In the description. Uh, and then, of course, be sure to check out our partners, Clarkston CBD Company, excellent CBD products, Scribed, Audible Alternative, and Buzzsprout, start your own podcast. And then, of course, make sure and join the Tin Foilist, the Tin Foil Militia. Get ad-free episodes, rewards for tier members, chat with us directly on Discord, access to live bonus episodes every single week, and all of my loyalty. These people, they are the best. 
Got to give it up to him. And I'm going to give him a shout out right now. That's not the right one right now. I believe I see militia forming. Tinfoil. Militia. Stop, militia. The tinfoil. Militia. I joined the militia, but why would you? What do you think tap water is? It's a gay bomb, baby. That's right. Get involved. Casey Armadino, Reich. Oh, no, my goodness. I'm all over my words. Michael Ralston, Casey Armadillo, Rihanna Little, the OG supporter designer, tinfoil hat wearing Aaron Rice, Jesse, Jet Life Teague, Michael Benavides, Carlton Turner, Matthew Morfitt, Morgan, and of course, our very own Nathan Boldly Gone Higby. Higby! God, we miss him. Hope he's doing well out there in the field. Uh... That's it, folks. I hope you all have a wonderful new year. I hope you have a phenomenal new year and uh, that you live it up. Get get all your resolutions in order. What do you have planned? Huh? Mine are the usual. You know, work out more. Uh, I don't know. Uh, Put my tongue on more things. I'm not really sure. I I don't really. I don't know. The New Year's resolution thing, I gave up on that a while ago because I never follow through. So why would I? You know what I mean? Why would I? But anyways, I hope you all do, and I hope you stick to it, too. And, uh, hey, in the comments, let me know. What are your New Year's resolutions? I'd love to know, and I hope you stick to them. And uh, and that's it. And as I always say, stay elevated. Keep your eyes to the skies. And, of course, watch out for the government. They're shiesty bastards. Bye-bye, bye-bye.